So in this video I'm looking at photographing green woodpeckers. I'm back at my hide location and although I've had this location for over a year now I've not really had a chance to photograph green woodpeckers until fairly recently. I know that they're about, I've heard them quite regularly and that sort of thing over the year but none of them have been down in front of the hide until quite recently. What they've been coming in for is the rotten apples that I've been putting out to photograph the field fairs, thrushes, blackbirds. I didn't actually realise that green woodpeckers ate rotten apples, but I've had one male coming in fairly regularly um, and he comes down there and I've managed to get some quite nice shots of them. So what I'll do is I'll show in the first part of the video the setup that I'm using. Um, and then in the second half I'm going to show some pictures that I've taken on a previous occasion um, at the old hide at Ipswich uh, and that would be pictures taken of juvenile ones in the summer and there they weren't actually coming down to apples they were coming down to a small pond to drink and bathe so this is the, the normal setup that I have for f photographing birds I've got all the feeders and everything here but a groom woodpecker isn't going to come onto these, okay? What I'm trying to actually photograph is it down there with all those rotten apples. That's where the field fares, the red wings and the green woodpecker will probably come down there. The distance from there to the hide is probably something like about 20 foot. But with the 150 to, to 400 mil lens, um, I can get them in quite easily. It'll give me a nice image size. So now I'm going to show some video clips and stills which were taken on the first time that the woodpecker came down to the apples. The video clips are shot at 60 frames per second and slowed down in post-production to about half the speed. Shooting from the normal opening of the hide does not always give the best viewpoint when photographing birds when they're on the ground. You're having to angle the lens down at roughly 45 degrees, which can give a slightly cluttered background. Because I had not expected the woodpecker to come down, I'd primarily been photographing the birds near the feeders. Consequently, I then had to move the lens very slowly to lock onto the woodpecker. If you do this too quickly, there's more chance you will spook the bird. It also helps to wait a few seconds for the birds to relax before attempting to move the lens. Fortunately, it stayed there for a good few minutes and that enabled me to get some nice stills as well as some good footage. And what I'm primarily going to be trying to do is to photograph them at ground level, which is why I'm using the ground level opening on the hide. Today is a bit overcast, not sure that, that I'll have a lot of luck today, but the other day I had some beautiful lighting and they were coming down very, very regularly. So here I've got the, the apples all down there. Some are really quite rotten. They've been out sort of quite a long time. The fresher ones, what I've done is I've actually just put them into a microwave for 10 minutes or so just to, to cook them slightly and make them nice and soft. What you can't see from the viewpoint of the hide is I've actually got hidden behind the apples I've got some bird paste here which I make at home and put in into the into the fat ball feeders that will attract a lot of the starlings the starlings won't eat the apples so much but they'll certainly come down down for this and hopefully the fact that there's a lot of birds coming down here will attract, you know, the, the green woodpecker will become confident to come down here. The only problem I sometimes have is the woodpecker, woodpecker comes down and I have other birds in front of it. But certainly I've been having lots of field fares, red wings, jay comes down occasionally. But with this very, very low viewpoint, the lens is only about 12 inches off the ground there and, and from 20 foot away. That's going to throw that background completely out of focus, which will give me a nice, nice viewpoint.
so um, I'm sitting in the hide, basically just on the floor of the hide, and using this low level opening. Because I've actually got a little platform here I can rest a bean bag on and just sit the lens on there. I don't actually look through the viewfinder. What I'm composing and looking for is the picture on the back of the screen. Now the opening here <clears throat> where the lens is sticking out is only about 12 inches off the ground and I've got quite a bit of scrim netting there so they can't actually see me. And I've also got scrim netting in this opening here. This opening is my viewing opening. So I've got scrim netting there, they still can't see me, but I can see out fairly clearly. So I'm looking through here and seeing to see where they are, and it's just a case of just moving the camera around there, getting it in focus on the back and pressing the shutter button. But the big advantage of this low level viewpoint is I can sit here quite happily. The light's actually improving now, so if anything comes down, I should get some good shots. So now I'm going to show some of the images and videos taken from the low level opening on my hide. As you can see, the lighting did improve and I managed to get some reasonable footage. All the video is again shot at 4K 60 frames per second on the OM-1, but this time I have not slowed down the videos in post-production. The advantage of shooting video at 4K 60 frames per second on the OM-1 is that at that setting it will autofocus. I just wish it would autofocus at 120 frames per second. In my opinion, the ground level aspect does give a more natural and appealing viewpoint. And once I had shot a few video clips that I was happy with, I took some stills. This close-up image of the woodpecker with its tongue going into the apple is my favourite from the session. It's a crop from the full frame image. People often say that with Micro Four Thirds you cannot get good quality if you crop heavily into a picture. I've made an A3 print from this image and the quality looks very good. I've also seen this image projected onto a big screen at a recent talk and the quality looks stunning. So to finish up, I'm going to show some stills taken back in 2019, shortly after I changed from full frame Canon to the Olympus system. These were taken with the OM-1 Mark II and the 40-150mm f2.8 lens combined with the 1.4 converter. They were taken up my old hide setup on private land in Ipswich, and again I am photographing from ground level. Fortunately, at this location, the owner of the land allowed me to dig a 4 foot by 4 foot by 2.5 foot deep hole in the ground, and I built the half sized hide up around this. Sitting on a stall in the hole, I could comfortably photograph at ground level. These images were taken in the height of the summer, and at that time of year I was occasionally getting visits from juvenile green woodpeckers to drink and bathe at the small pond. The pond was really a glorified bird bath, and it had been made to resemble a pond. It was only two and a half inches deep in the middle, so birds could come down and bathe quite happily without any worry of getting out of their depth. Although the pond was only 15 foot from the hide, the birds took no notice of the lens sticking out the front. Using a completely silent electronic shutter enabled me to get a whole series of both portrait shots as well as images of them bathing. After they had a good soaking, they would emerge from the pond looking very bedraggled. They would then give themselves a good shake and then sit in the sun to dry out. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.